Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to talk about the Internet's domain name system, or DNS, including name servers, registrars, DNS records, and everything else involved in the practical operation of the World Wide Web and email delivery. So if you've ever wondered how the web actually works, or you need to understand these things to administer a website or email, then this video will explain how everything fits together. Every computer on the internet has an internet protocol or IP address to identify it. However, to make life easier for human beings, we also have the domain name system, or DNS. This allows people to use domain names rather than IP addresses when accessing websites and sending email messages. The domain name system may therefore be thought of as the Internet's phone book. So how does it work? Well, when a user enters a domain name, such as explainingcomputers.com, into a web browser on their computer, a request or query is sent to a server called a DNS resolver, also known as a recursive DNS server or DNS recursor. This is typically managed by the user's internet service provider and is responsible for finding the IP address that can deliver the service that's been requested. And it achieves this goal by querying three other computers called name servers. Firstly, the DNS resolver forwards the request to a DNS root name server. In turn, this responds by telling the DNS resolver a top-level domain or TLD name server it needs to communicate with. So, in our example, the DNS resolver is told to query a TLD name server that keeps a register of .com domains. Armed with this information, the DNS resolver queries the TLD name server, which responds with the details of two or more so-called authoritative name servers that hold information on the requested domain. And in our example, these name servers are called ns69.domaincontrol.com and ns70.domaincontrol.com. Now, even more informed, the DNS resolver chooses one of these name servers and asks it for the IP address of the server that hosts the website it wants to access. Here, the IP address is 160.153.131.187, which is communicated to the DNS resolver, which in turn sends it back to the web browser on the user's computer. Finally, the web browser sends a request for explainingcomputers.com to the web server with this IP address, and in turn it receives the page content that the user requested. Note that the DNS resolver will keep a copy or cache of recent queries so it can respond more quickly to requests to access common domain names. In addition, your computer will also keep a cache of domain name queries so will not always consult a DNS resolver. Finally, it's worth noting that whilst what I've just described relates to website access, the same process takes place when sending email. It's just that the initial query involves an email rather than a web address, with the end result being a communication with the correct email server. Now that we've seen the basics of DNS operations, let's see what's involved if you want to obtain a domain name and add a website and associated email. To start the process, we need to find and purchase a domain from a domain name registrar. Registrars manage the reservation of domain names and need to be accredited by either a generic top-level domain registry or a country code top-level domain registry. Popular domain name registrars include GoDaddy, Namecheap, Domain.com, Porkbun and Amazon Route 53. So, if you want to get an internet domain, go to one of these sites, search for something that's available, and away you go. After registration, two or more name servers need to be assigned to your domain. And if you're wondering why do you need more than one, this is to provide a level of redundancy in case one name server goes offline. 
Usually, your registrar will automatically assign some of its own name servers when you first register or transfer a domain. However, as the owner of a domain, you always have the option of choosing different name servers if you wish. And if you transfer the registration of your domain between registrars, you need to pay careful attention to when and if you change the name servers in order to avoid your website or email temporarily going offline. Once name servers are assigned, they need to be populated with DNS records. These provide the information that will be reported to those trying to access your domain and can be edited in the online control panel provided by your registrar. Here we are looking at the DNS control panel provided by GoDaddy, whilst this is the one from Namecheap, and this is what things used to look like on Google domains before it was sadly closed. And a key thing to note is that exactly how DNS records are entered and what the fields are called does vary in the interfaces provided by different registrars. Several types of DNS record exist, and explaining all of them is beyond the scope of this video. However, a key type are name server or NS records, which, as I'm sure you've guessed, store the information on a domain's name servers. As we can see in this example, at a minimum, all DNS records include a type, host name, data value, and TTL or time to live fields. As just noted, exactly what these fields are called and how they are formatted does vary, with, for example, some registrars requiring the entry of a domain name in the host field, whilst others use an at symbol to indicate the domain to which the record relates. It's also worth noting that the TTL or time to live value tells a DNS resolver how long it should keep a record in its cache. Depending on the registrar, the value may be entered in hours, minutes, or as here, in seconds. So here, the TTL value of 21,600 instructs a DNS resolver to only cache the information for six hours. And so, the larger the value, the longer it will be before any changes to the DNS record will propagate across the wider internet. Once you've registered a domain, you may want to create a website. To do this, you will need space on a web server to host your website's files. And most people purchase a hosting plan rather than attempting to run their own web server. Most domain name registrars do offer web hosting, and hosting your website with your registrar can make your life easier. However, there is absolutely no reason to purchase your web hosting from the same company that acts as your domain registrar. Once you've obtained or otherwise set up web hosting, you'll need to add a DNS record on your name servers to indicate the IP address of your web server. Here, for example, is the A or address record for explainingcomputers.com, which ensures that when a DNS resolver searches for the site, it's provided with the appropriate IP address. Here, it's also important to note that an A record is used where a website is hosted on a server that's identified by what's called an IP version 4 address. However, some web servers use the newer IP version 6 protocol. And here, a quad A DNS record will be needed, which would be in this format. If you have a website, it's also likely you'll need to add additional DNS records to assist with managing its hosting and to provide appropriate visitor access. For example, to allow people to access the site if they enter a www prefix, you may add a CNAME record like this. Here, CNAME refers to canonical name and is a type of DNS record that maps an alias to a true or canonical domain name. Again, note that exactly how such records are entered in a registrar's DNS control panel does vary, so our example could look like this. Finally, note that if you opt for an online website builder, you may be able to purchase your domain name and hosting all in one go and never see your name server and other DNS records. However, they will still exist and should be accessible somewhere in the system. You can also use websites such as dnschecker.org to look up your DNS records.
although these don't always report all DNS record types. If you want to receive email at your domain, you will need to purchase email hosting or otherwise set up an email server. Once again, most registrars will happily sell you a service. Or you could opt for a service that provides email such as Microsoft 365 or Google Workspace. Regardless of where you choose to host your email, you will need to add a mail exchange or MX DNS record, which will direct email sent to your domain to the correct email server. Often, additional CNAME and text records are also required, as your service provider will detail. Few people give a second thought to what happens when they type in a web or email address. However, as we've seen in this video, the technology behind the scenes is fascinating, and the more you understand it, the more you can appreciate the power of the internet, and the more control you can take of any domains you're responsible for. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.